Okay, we can start. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, and good afternoon from Bergen. Uh, welcome to our uh, webinar hosted by ITRP uh, PS Task Force on Resilience and Secure Large, uh, large Scale and uh, HVA Data Science Group. Today we have uh, Dr. Uh, Vitatos uh, from uh, Lithuania, who was an associate professor in uh, uh, Kaunas University before, and now he is the CEO, CEO and uh, founder of Energy Advice Company. He will present a very interesting topic uh, named uh, entitled AASAS uh, Digital Twin as a tool for advanced uh, process control and predictive maintenance. Uh, Dr. White uh, Vitatas, you can uh, introduce yourself and uh, please, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, much about Thank you. Um, I, I'm happy to present uh, research and uh, platform and, and, and results what we achieved in energy advice company and uh, and uh, today in this webinar we will discuss about the predictive maintenance uh, topic uh, advanced process control digital twin and overall solution which is implementing the ASS uh, uh, platform ASS platform is energy advice software as a service platform it's full independent platform for for such tools like digital twin advanced process control and predictive maintenance uh, so who we are energy advice uh, we provide um, two type services one is uh, uh, studies energy efficiency technological efficiency auditing process and another part of the business is a software and uh, uh, energy device already delivered to to market uh, eapsm software is de desktop software for the uh, electrical and, and, and hydraulic fluid uh, hydro fluid mechanic uh, analysis of, of of complex systems uh, you can find it on eapsm.net and the ss platform it is um, it is cloud solution for the IoT, digital, digital twin, data analysis, real-time data analysis, advanced process control, digital twins, and, and, and predictive maintenance. Um, today, we would talk about the capabilities of digital twin and, uh, and PDM uh, application as uh, capabilities. We will talk about the digitalization maturity. Why, in fact, why we should do this, this, this type of a businesses. We will talk about digital twin concept and predictive maintenance uh, concept uh, as an output of a digital twin. Uh, here, all these topics are very, very important because if you want to, to deliver uh, predictive maintenance uh, uh, solution, uh, of course, reverse engineering, first we should uh, have digital twin concept when we need to have good tool, uh, good platform to, to, to data process for data processing in order to deliver DT and PDM. Um, predictive maintenance uh, project uh, was supported by Norway grants and then uh, energy advice received Norway grant and uh, that's why we have um, uh, capabilities to, to work on, on predictive maintenance and to present our results today in, in, uh, in this webinar. Um, First of all, to do something, of course, we should collect data. And without data, we cannot do any any any, any mathematics, any analytics. So uh, energy advice also deliver um, energy advice data collector software, which uh, collects data from the uh, many types of vendors, uh, device vendors. Uh, uh, through many types of protocols, for example, uh, S7, H1, Modbus, Profinet, Profibus, OPC, RESTAP, and many, many other CBUS, um, LON, and etc. And we, we have functionality, uh, uh, a data collector, which send data 
uh, for example, each minute, second range data to uh, SS cloud. So for you, it's quite easy to, to, to connect data from, from, from your devices to the cloud. Uh, sending back, of course, if you are talking about advanced process control, of course, we should send back comment uh, from the cloud to, to uh, device, field devices, so uh, data writer software, which allow you to connect uh, command set points from the, uh, from the cloud to the field devices. Uh, coming back to functionality, of course, you would have Full flexibility for flexibility for the dashboard configuration, multiple tabs, language support, the dashboard by user group, real time data update, and etc. Many things that would help you to work and, and use uh, digital twin and predictive maintenance functionality. Um, what how we do? We use Airflow controller to control mathematics, and your mathematics uh, could be written on Python. Uh, and uh, you can make schedule, make parallel calculation, cascade dependent calculation, etc. So all this functionality allow you easily to 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 use not only our our predictive maintenance functionality, but also uh, write down in the same platform extra on top functionality for the data processing. Of course, all our experience is in, in connected inside the platform and and in, and you can use uh, many functionality on one place for example we have a three G uh, geographical information system on 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 board engine inside and we have uh, electricity grid uh, functionality um, uh, gas pipe water pipe thermal network modeling uh, functionality inside uh, so, uh, so as a platform, we provide quite many things, and one of them is predictive maintenance. And, and coming back to predictive maintenance, digitalization maturity. Why we do predictive maintenance? Why we do digital twin? Because uh, because uh, we are unhappy on what happening in our business, in our technological business. And here we should understand digital uh, digitalization maturity, uh, what, how and why we are doing. So on as a pyramid, so first is microcontrollers, of course, we install it and, and, and why we install it because human cannot help us with reaction time. Uh, we added later general meters to understand energy consumption. We put at multivariable control because uh, complex uh, complex system and complex um, parameters should be controlled. Uh, we were unhappy in the last five years. We installed a monitoring system to our businesses. And finally, we understood that monitoring, uh, we, we have, after monitoring, we have a lot of data, a huge amount of data. And if a human is capable to uh, manage free tax uh, maximum, so analytical system, uh, uh, analysis starts from the free tax uh, in order to, to, to do something. So uh, finally, we're here with digital twin. So we need to have full mathematical copy of en engineering system. And when we have full uh, mathematical copy of engineering system, we can provide advanced process control. We can provide uh, predictive maintenance based on insights for digital twin deliver, add extra functionality, extra insights, uh, and, and this would be predictive maintenance when we can we can understand deterioration of parameters and uh, and and uh, expect when when something would happen and then and schedule maintenance issues. So in general, what is digital twin? So it's physical model and it's real time optimization and it's a real time replica of 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 physical device. And why I'm uh, talking about digital twin here because in order to have good functionality of a predictive maintenance we need to have good functionality on 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 uh digital twin and in fact real time capabilities is also here because now we have computational power cloud computational power we can schedule everything at least near to real time and and and, and work on data which which is in second timestamp um 
if we compare control system versus digital twin uh, and predictive maintenance, okay, we can add um, uh, the control system is not capable do, to do something. Some functionality is not uh, is not available in control systems in general. That's why we have cloud solution. That's why we have digital twin. That's why we ha we can reach uh, predictive maintenance functionality and the control system. For example, actual air supply. Uh, um it's not available control system uh, if you don't have flow meter but in digital twin we can we can have this functionality because um uh, you can always run reverse engineering to for example do estimate on flow from uh, around around meter at well but if we have airflow metering installed we can have uh, uh predictive maintenance uh, solution for this airflow meter usually our flow meters um, uh, have unstable metering error uh it's fluctuate on, on on depending on on many situations so uh digital twin adding to metering meter at value we can always reach uh, uh, insights what would happen with a, with a flow meter uh, uh, required air supply, some required tax, uh, amount of fuel burn it, uh, required for a supply gas, uh, temperatures in furnace, for, color, for calorific value. Most of parameters which is in, in burning systems are critical. We cannot touch, uh, reach values in, in, in control system. So you need to have digital twin. And here we have all these parameters uh, 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 predictive maintenance uh, if, if 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 some sensors goes down or error increase and you understand that your error is increasing of of your sensors uh and you should do something uh, in maintenance uh, so the same uh, talking about control systems energy balance um, forecast uh, metering device error revelation you cannot run all this stuff on control system that's why we are here with uh, higher digitalization level a higher automation level like digital doing and predictive maintenance efficient control uh, it's another interesting uh, what we reach it out that efficient control is possibility to re to reduce maintenance costs. You know this uh, failure rate uh, curve uh, and and uh, savings potential uh, uh, for the maintenance uh, if we have good control of parameters. Uh, how to say predictive maintenance uh, it is our prediction that something would go down or, or some parameters go 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 out of of um, tolerance um, but we if we have digital twin which monitor and we have an advanced process control which have better uh, uh, process control we can increase time between maintenance so it's like everything on one one um, on one plate so predictive maintenance descriptions of course it, it like uh, of course everything is about costs to save costs costs and uh, it's, it's the technique to which uh, determine conditions uh, uh, of uh, of in service equipment and in order to estimate when maintenance should be performed so uh, Preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance uh, is also here. Uh, but finally, to do all these steps, uh, finally, we should understand which parameters is um, um, is, go is going uh, below a tolerance level with which we can tol tolerate. So digital twin as by default solution it becomes very, very important. Uh, so for the predictive maintenance, what we can do, for example, oxygen in flue gas level. Yes, we have oxygen meter, but who knows is it correct <laughs> measure during, on, 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 online? Is it, it correct measurements or not? Uh, for example, furnace flame temperature. Uh, is it correct value? Well, uh, what we see in the online meet, uh, temperature sensor, it's not, not uh, ventilator effectiveness, water supply pump, 
efficiency working point uh, regulators um, frequency converter heat exchangers quality uh, heat exchange um, efficiency uh, water supply flow meter or heat energy meter error metering uh, so bad sensor detection in general not only metering error but uh, so so bad sensor detection of course it's very easy solution but but what is the metering error what is the percentage is it's so, so tricky tricky to understand so how we do it's physical system first uh, we put this to the digital twin uh, measurements online data digital twin give us process data uh, we use real-time measurements on process data and here we have some decision on predictive maintenance so it's in general structure how we reach uh, insights and, uh, and then how this functionality is run so in fact we need of course data uh, for example temperature so it's it's graph show you temperature it's real data uh, shows you real data temperature uh, uh, one is uh, calculated right and one is uh, kind of, uh, online value so uh, as you can see the dynamics is quite correct yes some 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 extremums are not seen by uh, by sensor or by calculation of course uh, it is of course due, due to dynamics we don't see something but in fact the trend in slower time scale um, dynamics is available but uh, when the sensor go out from the range uh, error would increase so we, we can detect this and an understanding that it's if, if 8,000 hours, it was good. Uh, 8,001 hours, it's not something. So we understand that it started something and we can make corrections. Uh, for example, uh, if the same approach, if we have temperature and uh, a digital twin gives us biomass boiler, for example, flue gas content, flue gas flow rate. Uh, we can estimate efficiency of a boiler in general, so we can understand what would be trend line, what would be the future of this uh, efficiency, and we can understand that this boiler would work in some tolerance on 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 on, on some period, and that at some extent it would should be stopped for maintenance issues. Um, uh, for example, another specific, it's quite specific issues, uh, fireside erosion and corrosion effect. It's, 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 it's of course, we, we have description what, where is the difference between corrosion and where is the difference on, on erosion effect. But uh, fire, uh, fireside too, but um, uh, if you have temperatures and output from a digital twin, uh, we can estimate accumulated wall thickness and, 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 and we can est estimate the duration of this wall, wall thickness. Uh, due to we know quite many things. It's, it's, it's flow, it's temperature, it's uh, friction, and etc. Yes, and uh, here it's relation to advanced process control. Uh, of course, this, this give us as I told, it's on everything on one stage. Uh, advanced process control, if you understand uh, the impact of erosion corrosion effect. So, uh, for example, particle size and flue gas, uh, flue gas velocity, we can control and particle size, for example, biomass burning, we can control through burning uh, efficiency. Uh, so it's like controllable and it's advanced process control at the same uh, at the same side. Uh, but uh, for example, pollution angles and surface hardness, it's not, it's under control of digital twin, so it's, we cannot control this. Uh, the same uh, dew point corrosion uh, effects uh, we can do estimate on 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 an accumulated impact on on on, on of condensates. Uh, from a PDM and uh, uh, how first it's, it's online real time measurements and digital an output of of flue gas content and flue gas flow rates and, and we can make the estimate what would be accumulate 
the effect on of condensate on on, on a boiler. Of course, finally, um, finally, our target is to reduce impact. So we add advanced process control on that to reduce impact, but the predictive maintenance con uh, functionality allows to understand the target and monitor future trend line. Uh, for the cast in general, it's, it's very, uh, very important, and we use this functionality of forecast in many, many places, in many places. Uh, uh, why? Because you, you, for inertial process, you, you, you can uh, have advanced control, and you put in advanced control, uh, you can estimate, um, you can estimate uh with a forecast what would be in next next stages so all this data also use it to, to the same digital twin and predictive maintenance it's everything on one stage but it's very important and, and here you can see very dynamic system it's steam consumption for example and uh, um, so in very short window we can make estimate what would be next uh, and this is data is used for all functionality inside the uh, SAS platform uh, case study on the same uh, topic, case study. Uh, here we have um, um, gases, flue gases goes to drop box. Uh, it's gases to technology here uh, because technology requires quite high temperature and big power. So it was, it is used at flue, flue gases is used to, 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 to in order to deliver this heat. Uh, sorry, here heat exchanger. Sorry, and and it's going to help output economizers. But uh, the tricky point is here that we cannot measure with good precision um, uh, what is energy consumption from from flue gas side. We can put meter on heater exchanger side, but also it's, it was tricky. So our goal task was to estimate. Uh, estimate what is energy consumption from a flow gas side. A uh, tricky is that uh, flow meter is installed on, 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 on near to economizer, flow meter is installed, but uh, but flow meter, of course, it's, it, it measure flow, but you cannot uh, measure tones. And uh, because it's biomass boiler, you, you don't know heat capacity of, 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 of heat because uh, heat flow, because uh, uh, temperature uh, because content of it's inside with water vapor but or not so it's it's it's, it's a, a content of, of gas is changing so mass is changing so we cannot in, with good precision you cannot uh, account with uh, precision it's totally 10 percent error variation so 10 percent it's it's not acceptable error to to, to, to analysis so what we did digital twin uh we did uh, we have fun, which may uh, do mixing of flow, so reducing a little bit slightly temperature. Uh, and, uh, but we have variable frequency drive, we have uh, active power from variable frequency drive. So we created, um, uh, we have fun characteristics. So we did estimate what is the flow. And if we did uh, estimate of a flow, what is going through, 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 after, uh, through fun, uh, 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 we from a digital twin we received uh, uh, content of a flue gas so its density so we could do estimate tones of how many flow is coming here and around if we have temperature as a measured value so we can easily understand what is the uh, power uh, consumption from 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 heat exchanger so total heat was 4.6 megawatt uh, uh, heat exchanger was consuming 4.3 so 300 uh, 200 near to 200 kilowatts losses in in in, in here in this part uh, of course um, this losses is related to smart meter to, to, to metering errors to, to to many many errors and uh, where is the predictive maintenance? And predictive maintenance is here. It's very tricky that if we have metered value and we have calculation and mass and mass and energy balance, we can always uh, do estimate on error of metered value. So all sensors, what we have, we can do estimate on accumulative error. So we can easily understand what that some some sensors goes 
outside from the tolerance uh, and uh, and we should go to this node to, to do something to to to, to or even uh, okay make later decisions uh, it's not thermal process what we uh, what we have experience is also for example cooling process it's, it's a cooling machine which produced cold uh, minus uh, 30 and uh, chilled water uh, food industry uh, you know tricky with a compressor uh, that uh, usually don't have ammonia flow you don't know what is ammonia in, in this in this case it's ammonia you don't know ammonia flow if you don't know ammonia flow so you you cannot do nothing in fact you cannot make mass balance you cannot make uh, energy balance and so so uh, what we deliver it, uh, we, in, inside the digital twin, we're capable to estimate what is a mass flow each five minutes, estimate average average five minute estimate on, 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 on what is the flow um, inside. But, uh, and mass energy balance, so it's advanced process control to optimize temperatures and et cetera. So it's many, many deliverables. And uh, predictive maintenance is also here. Uh, but if we have real-time measured value, if we have temperatures uh, inside chiller, uh, inside cooling machine, temperatures, pressures, uh, uh, compressors, elect actual electrical energy consumption, uh, and digital twin gives us uh, uh, flow rate, mass balance, energy balance, we, we can always do estimate on accumulated estimate on compressor efficiency, condenser efficiency, or rep operation site uh, efficiency, and etc. So many, many parameters we can, we do, can see, we do estimates on, on um, let's say decreasing in efficiency. And for example, our client was calling us uh, claiming that we uh, advanced process control uh, um, uh, uh, temperature which which output we produce is insufficient for the process for the technological process and we check at the numbers and we found that uh, um, water site chill at water site uh, uh, exchanger was reducing efficiency and it was reducing efficiency. It's milk sector, so it's, it's some yeah, milk. Milk was in, in coming into water side leakage, milk leakage to water side, and and then heat exchanger was uh, re reducing in efficiency. So we stop it, clean it, and then it's, 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 and then and we save it quite a lot of uh, uh, electrical energy because higher efficiency of of, of a cooling machine and due to PDM functionality. Uh, fire tube boiler, fire tube advisor. Yes, we are capable and and, and uh, do this advisor uh, as described it earlier a little bit in theoretical in practical way. How we did uh, with digital twin for biomass boiler. It's 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 uh, we monitor uh, hydraulic coefficient. Uh, hydraulic coefficient is it's uh, for the compressible gas. Uh, flue gas is compressible gas and we calculate hydraulic co coefficient online and we calculate logarithm temperature difference of a process and we can uh, describe what whatever is uh, problem with the heat exchanging uh, uh, reduced efficiency or it is due to uh, formation some formation and due to hydraulic losses increase of, of, of. and here we have real example where the data of PDM real example when when uh, for example uh, uh, green was efficiency heat exchanging and blue color was uh, uh, coefficient uh, hydraulic losses coefficient so you can see it's, it's increasing and so just a sign minus it's increasing and it's after cleaning and the efficiency, heat exchanging efficiency wasn't, it, uh, and a little bit increased that even though bo uh, boiler was capable to work even on, on, on better heat exchanging efficiency. Uh, 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 after cleaning, it's a little bit increased, but, but main issue was the formation of this, this, this formation on the tubes, fire tubes cold side and the temperature and hydraulic losses coefficient was increasing and we saw this and then we stop it and clean it but what is important with pdm because we understood where is a problem with pdm we the boiler was stopped on january this year it's it's very cold 
month of this year, January, it was quite cold winter in Europe. Uh, we stop it uh, for a couple of days only and cool, do not cool down the boiler because we know where is a problem and then we, we understood that we don't need to cool down boiler. So we we save it quite a lot of uh, how, how to say duration of uh, for the maintenance. So it's direct impact of predictive maintenance. Uh, the same example with ventilators uh, is on flue gas recirculation, for example. When we have uh, also online data of ventilator, we have uh, frequency and uh, uh, frequency and 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 uh, variable frequency, dry frequency, and active power, and we are capable to do estimate on on ventilators uh, flow from the predictive maintenance tool. We deliver it uh, uh, yes, from a predictive maintenance. Uh, yes, the same. Predictive maintenance, we deliver it uh, uh, flow rate, uh, mass balance, and energy balance uh, from the sensors, temperature, uh, pressure, electrical energy, and frequencies. So uh, we were capable to estimate flow, mass flow, and on opposite, it's a uh, ventilator efficiency as an output, supply pressure as an output, uh, and mass flow as an output. So uh, we are capable to estimate whatever uh, ventilator is working on good condition or not bad. For example, we found in one uh, project that ventilator was working on, on cavitation zone. And um, it was interesting. We started project. We found that it's on the cavitation zone. And in a couple months, uh, this ventilator stop it, uh, crash it. <laughs> but we 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 knew that uh, a problem was cavitation, and we found that yes, we opened it. It's, it was a cavitation uh, problem, and 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 and, and uh, uh, it's very interesting that if we had um, a project earlier, so we, we could stop this, 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 this behavior or due to advanced process control in order to, to not to put to the bad working condition. So uh, um, another application what we reach uh, of PDM is on, 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 on uh, glass uh, furnace. It's also a real project. Or what I'm showing it's these projects are real running now uh, on uh, gas uh, gas side and uh, this project is uh, related to optimizing uh, on one hand optimizing uh, uh, optimizing uh, gas burning in, 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 in furnace glass it's for the gla glass bottle from this glass and uh, on another hand uh, we found in this project problem with uh, flow meter um, because of very high temperatures, uh, the oxygen meter in the flue gas was not installed. It was decision to install flow meter on, on air supply side. But with flow meter, um, metering error increasing uh, dramatically, and we should clean the sensor at least one per day. So, but we didn't know this, but we saw from the numbers what that something is happening here. When we put a PDM on, on this sensor, we found that the sensor is bad, and, and now we are cleaning uh, cleaning uh, sensor according to PDM recommendations. So, so, yes, seems to be that I have finished my presentations, 30 slides. I was very fast. Um, so, but you can uh, raise a questions, and I can come back to any slide, whatever you want. Yeah, thank you so much, Vitas, for your interesting uh, presentation. Now we can go to the Q and A section, mm -hmm. and uh, if anybody have question, he can raise his hand or write in a chat and then we can ask uh, uh, without us. Um, I don't know, I don't see chat, so you should read messages, okay? Yeah, I can read the messages. Mm -hmm. so I don't know, but I don't see chat. Oh, uh, any questions? I see chat section, section okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have a, yeah, we have one question now. Uh, 
I think. How often do you update the model based on the feedback data? Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm. Uh, to provide such type of projects, uh, cost effective is no, not to update nothing <laughs> inside because it's, it's just extra cost. But yeah, day by day it's happen, but we should improve some mo models. And uh, because when we come to the pro project, uh, we, mm, okay, we should finish project uh, on time efficiently but sometimes we don't um, have how to say uh, enough time to 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 build very very good model and we run uh, and this model have some limitation on some some critical points for example the heat exchangers uh, efficiency reducing so some parameters going down and uh, and uh, uh, something should be updated but we go to the how to say standardization way we standardize our our models in order to when we if we upgrade it in one place it would be upgraded on the next place and this model would be improved so it's not like a uh, update of a model it's like an improvement on the model in order to deliver um how to say very good very good quality model okay thanks for your answer we have another question from Rodrigo, is there a process you consider for identifying model and parameters before you start running your digital twin? Uh, how we how we consider and identify uh, data required? Okay, how we start business? Okay, so it's like from a commercial stage question. Um, yeah, very good. We did quite a lot of models, so for sometimes it seems to be that for us it's easy to understand what to, how to to run in the shortest way. Um, we what has uh, allowed to have uh, flexibility? I would tell like this: we have specific technique inside which allow us to do estimate of parameters which we are not me measuring. It's estimation technique inside. And uh, uh, if I can, uh, how to say, have five parameters uh, online, but I, for example, I don't, I, I don't have flow meter. It's, it's very usual in ammonia, ammonia, CO2 compressor station. So we don't, in, in general, we don't have flow meters in general, it's a problem because we are a cost and, uh, and uh, but we have uh, estimations technique. And because we have estimation technique, in fact, the main limitation for us to run some, anything is can we really connect data to the cloud? It's only one thing and one only limitation. Can we connect and one? Uh, why? Because it could be very old controller or client do not have access to the controller or, or whatever. So, so it's very, very, how to say, uh, basic problems of, 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 of that. But if, if a date is on cloud, we would do something definitely. <laughs> uh, on one hand, on another hand, we have experience of many, many models. As you as you, you saw, it's 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 refrigeration, it's it's uh, burning, it is drying process. For example, we have drying process, and we we have very quite specific. For example, germinate grain germination process for the malt. So we have different process models. So for us, it's very easy to 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 to. So main issue is to connect data. We have specific technique which allow us to. Uh, estimate parameters parameters which are not cal uh, metered. And if you have this, you don't have issues to run math. You don't have issues. Okay. Yeah, we are receiving many questions. Yeah. Um, the next question is from Daniel. Uh, would this type of digital twin also be feasible for a smaller scale application? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, of course. When we come to a project, we check ROI. Roy, if it's less than one year, we can run this because it's you no, know, it's feasible due to Roy. 
now we are going with the SaaS platform to to next level. We are uh, trying to run platform and standardize standardize its model. So uh, and it would be monthly based fee uh, on on on. So you we would invite you as us.net so it's, it's now it's it's it's, it's a platform is creating uh, front i mean platform site user interface is creating now and uh, probably you can write down info energy advice lt uh, email to 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 ask us and we would give you like a uh, license of of test testers uh, for the testing license free of charge and you can run your digital things uh, free of charge for the testing purpose uh, and we are looking to standardize it would be very very easy to run and if it would be very easy to run you understand that it would be feasible in in, in very small systems and we, i mean it would be good roy just Okay, we have a question from Juan. Is there a way to evaluate the fidelity of the models in the digital twin? How do you know they are accurate with the real world devices? It's about accuracy of. Um, if you do math balance, uh, sorry, energy and math uh, and uh, mass, sorry, <laughs> energy and mass balance. Uh, so you you know accuracy. <laughs> For example, if you add uh, to the SCADA data, live, live data, you add smart meters uh, data. I mean electricity meters, uh, heat, uh, water uh, meter. It's it's like with a good good precision. It's, it's, it's uh, Electricity 0 0.2, 0 0.1 percent error. Yeah, energy meter is 1, 2 percent. Water meter it would be maybe 2 percent metering error. So you 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 understand that is your mass balance. Okay, so you you build equation, equations. You use equations which describe mass and energy at the same time. So so it's accuracy good. But the, what about the the parameter or uh, variables we cannot measure, and then you estimate it by your digital mm -hmm. twin. So we don't have a ground yeah, truth but, for that. But, but I would give you a simple example. How to measure uh, active resistance? You yeah. measure uh, current yeah. and voltage. Your yeah. resistance measure, measurement, or your resistance measurement depends, it, yeah. depends on uh, uh, precision of current and voltage. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, many parameters so, we yeah, calculate like that. But here we have, for example, for the boiler estimator, we have uh, maybe uh, 20, 30 metering points. I don't remember now, okay? Yeah. So uh, a total error creates a total error. I mean, for example, fuel accounting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, but it's controllable. Okay. The next question is from Mohammed. In industrial IoT, uh, how the calibration of sensor are done? Does this calibration interfere with real-time uh, measuring? Yes, of course. If you cal make calibration on online, so so yes, uh, yes, it would be interfere. It would make impact on your uh, all all math later, all PDM, DT, everything. It would be impacted. But finally, if you calculate total error. Uh, calculation on on top so it would uh, on one hand it's it would increase it and reduce it so it, you would would see impact on that and we had a project where the flow meter this flow gas meter of course i showed you with a dropbox flow gas recirculation and an exchanger uh, we did calibration of this flow meter according to 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 to, to dt and pdm <laughs> so we did reverse engineering on that because you need in flow meter to you should add uh, because it meet, measures um, uh, flow uh, cubic meters per second yeah you need to add uh, uh, kilograms uh, density i mean uh, kilo, cubic, kilogram per cubic meter yes and you should add uh, heating value at cp so it, it, uh, in order to measure energy so its calibration was done according to digital twin functionality pdm functionality to to, to, to calibration to uh, to uh, meter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, we are done. But I have also one question uh, regarding the the 
the module after the digital twin, which is a predictive maintenance decision. Do you also forecast the time of the a, a physical object should be replaced with a new one or, you know, just can you estimate this time also or forecast it? Yeah, as you, as you saw efficiency, if you see, if you see degradation rate, yeah. yeah, so we always can extend this. And then, and of course, we cannot uh, see that when it goes unlinear down. Yeah, so, because but, it's really dependent to the work condition also. You know, mm -hmm. some some sensors or objects, they have a data sheet that, which recommended when you should, you know, change it. Or, uh, it's time dependent, yeah, it's time dependent. It's but, time dependent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, if you're, you if you run uh, your equipment on, uh, for example, time dependent, it's calculated on uh, one year, eight thousand seventy uh, seven hundred sixty hours on uh, one hundred percent capacity. So, but if you estimate that this capacity is low, lower, so its um, um, effect on on is lower, but. Uh, digital twin give you more insight and predict for a predicted maintenance uh, and the decision would be like um, more deep because sometimes you see dynamic and your dynamic accumulated could be could have more impact uh, than, 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 than if you compare process table and then with dynamic okay it could be lower level but with you dynamic and it could be higher level but stable so it's opposite so you do cal a calculate accumulated impact for example for the district heating company pipe it's also Norway grant uh, what we uh, through this pro project uh, we we re did research that if you do estimate on uh, a thermal hydraulic network, heat, uh, district heating, uh, pressure difference on pipe and flow so dynamics, so you calculate the tension on the pipe dynamic and accumulate it, you can yield which pipe segments have most impact on uh, during this dynamic and, and impact on to, the, to the lifetime. So, so you can easily uh, understand which part of the grid or which, which segments are, are on highest risk. Mm. And then, of course, it would be decision yeah? Yeah. to do some maintenance or not. Yeah, but uh, my question is, you know, the how long in in the future you can you know for example go and tell uh, that you know this uh, instrument you know is in the risk and you should uh, and recommend that you should change it you know the future horizon how much is you know is, is yeah, you, uh, you you know answer is tricky <laughs> yeah yeah because if it's liner it's okay i show you efficient it's liner going go down but the process uh, later on some extent go on liner it down yes yeah it's not linear so, so um, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky. Uh, we would give you another uh, presentation after half a year and, and with uh, some extra results on, on that side, probably. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your interesting uh, presentation. It was super fantastic. Yeah, if there is no question, we can close the webinar. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Have a good Bye. day.